I started my 3D printed life-size Jabba the Hutt project back at the beginning of this year, and to be honest, it took a bit longer to finish up the 3D printing and assembly stages than I had expected. Part of this is due to some problems that I ran into in the printing and assembly process, and I'll talk about those in this video. Other things were just related to real life problems that crop up from time to time and delayed my progress. But I did eventually manage to finish it, and of course that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. But before we do that, I thought I would step back for a minute and sort of recap what I did up until now. This project involved me commissioning a 3D model of Jabba and then hollowing it out and cutting it up into a bunch of sections like this. And those would then be assembled to form a shell of Jabba that would hopefully stay together and resemble a actual life-size Jabba. So in the first video, I printed the head, as you can see here, and then I went on to the uh, sort of upper torso and arm section for the second video. For the third video, we did the belly and the upper tail, and that just left the bottom layer, which actually has the most pieces of any of the ones that I've done up until this point. In my last video, I remember commenting that I had no problems printing the parts and everything went great. That was not the case this time, however. This was one example of a problem that I had. The belt actually came loose. At the time, I thought that it had broken, but I think it just sort of came off and resulted in this lovely print you see here. That was the Creality CR10 S5, but also on the S4, I had an issue where the rollers here would get flat on one side and I ended up having to replace them. I did that with both printers just to be safe. And while I was doing all of those repairs, I decided to go ahead and press the Zinkibot into service here, printing a few things, as you can see. This is the printer that I reviewed a number of months ago. Uh, I used probably the Creality printers, though, about 95% of the time. Even when things were going well, the assembly process was rather difficult for this bottom layer, I'll have to say. Uh, what I did was to sand each of the parts that would be coming into contact with each other and then glue them with uh, either super glue or epoxy glue depending on if there was a little bit of a gap or not. The super glue is plenty strong generally speaking but I found that the epoxy would work best in some cases. It was often rather difficult to get the pieces to fit together just perfectly though and that ended up causing some gaps one problem I did run into when I was printing these bottom pieces is that some of them would be just strangely weak. Okay, here's one that I made that ended up that way, and I'll show you what I mean by that. First of all, if you sort of squeeze it, you can hear crackling. And that means that it's not been properly sort of bonded. The, the layers and, and everything are not all bonded into one piece as they should be, and so this is not very strong at all. And in fact, if I just take this, I have it sort of pressed up against my body. I can do that. Obviously, this is not what we want for Java's bottom layer. Um, I discovered, basically, I, I'm still a little unsure about like the root cause of this, but it seems that uh, if I print slower and hotter on these sort of horizontal pieces, that they come out fine. So, like... To give you an example, this section right here, if I can pick it up, there we are. Uh, you know, this is a, just a rectangle, but it's super strong. I can squeeze it with no crackling. I can, I'm not going to try too hard to break this, but you know, it, it doesn't really have any kind of give at all. Uh, so that's the final version here that I ended up with, but I did have several times where I just had, you know, weird breakages like the one I just showed you and got me a little bit worried, but I did eventually find uh, the solution. In addition to those steps that I just outlined, I also, for the bottom layer, uh, increased the number of perimeters that I was using, meaning that I made the walls thicker, I made them twice as thick, and I also bumped up the infill a little bit just to make everything nice and strong so that it could support the layers that would be resting on top of it. Here I am uh, printing the part of the tail. I, I thought it was really interesting how it made these little hairs inside, but uh, one other thing to note though is that uh, there's hardly any support material being used here at all. I just put it in the places where I thought it was absolutely necessary. After all, this is going to be inside 
the print and you wouldn't be able to see if there was a slight blemish or anything. So I just put it in two or three places and it worked just fine. If I had tried auto supports with Simplify 3D or something like that, it would have probably filled up that entire tail section and just taken forever. I did end up having to tape some of these sports together here though where they were starting to break and occasionally I've had to do that, just sort of reinforce them, but it, it came out just fine. And here we have the bottom layer mostly assembled. It was getting to be about the size of a small boat at this point. As you can see I was using uh, filaments of various colors at this point because I figured it didn't really matter what the bottom and the back looked like. I was going to be painting this eventually. Now the original plan had been to assemble this in sections, maybe three or four sections that I would then be able to bring upstairs and sand and paint outside or in the garage and then finally bring them back down for some final assembly. Uh, that turned out to be an unworkable plan for various reasons. The sections that I had chosen ended up being too large to go upstairs mostly uh, and also the thin shells being what they are uh, this basically won't hold together very well at all unless it's glued. Once you glue it together, it seems fairly strong, and I think it's fine. But I decided I was just going to glue it all together in the basement, and he'll just be there permanently, basically. The only problem is I'm going to have to find a way, aside from spray painting, to paint this guy. I guess I'll have to use a brush or something. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Uh, the main problem I ran into with this was that there were more gaps between the pieces than in the other sections, and I'm not really sure why that is. Maybe there was some variance in the printing settings or whatever. And also, you know, because I don't have any way of slotting these into place, it left some gaps. So you can see here, there's a little bit of a gap, which I filled with some putty. And in fact, I went in, as you'll see in a little bit, and filled a number of cracks with some epoxy putty. It was actually very stressful and difficult to try and align these sections together, and so, you know, if I hadn't had that plan of doing it in sections from the beginning, if I had just been doing it one piece at a time, I think it would have worked a lot better. For this uh, torso section that you're seeing here, I had to actually sort of wear it and hold it around my body and step inside and then align it myself, uh, you know, with the glue in place and try and get all the pieces just right, which... I wasn't entirely successful at but I think it came out relatively well. Uh, you can see it's starting to look more or less like Jabba's body. Interestingly enough, I think my entire family can fit inside this body easily. If I was going to do something like this again, I would definitely make the shell sections thicker. And, you know, when I was originally coming up with this plan, I wasn't sure if it was going to even be workable at all or, you know, possible to do this, so I wanted to make it as little uh, filament as possible just to keep the amount of filament used and the time printing down. But uh, I think, in hindsight, making it maybe an inch thick instead of more like a centimeter thick would have made aligning these pieces way easier and might have even allowed me to put in some sort of uh, pegs or something to help align them as well. Before I show you the whole thing together, I wanted to go back in time a little bit and show you the first test print that I talked about in the first video that was sort of the size of an action figure. And then we moved on to this larger one, which was the size of a sixth scale Jabba the Hutt. Much larger. But if you compare it in scale to the actual life-size figure, it's a little bit different. Honestly, it's getting difficult for me to get far enough away from the figure here in my basement to actually fit it all in frame, which gives you some idea of just how big it is. One of the biggest problems I had putting this together, which surprised me, was putting the top tail section on because it just would not line up properly. There was a gap of maybe a centimeter in some direction, no matter how I aligned it. So I ended up having to use epoxy putty to fill in some of those gaps. I think... It's supposed to be sandable, it's very hard, and should more or less disappear in the final finishing process. And as part of that process, of course, I'm going to be using something like Bondo or similar body filler to fill in the cracks and sand off some of this glue that's on the surface and stuff like that to hopefully make it look seamless. So while this is not perfect, there are some 
gaps and misalignments here and there. I'm hoping to be able to fix that up in the finishing process. A couple of people did ask about whether this is going to actually be a life-sized Jabba the Hutt in previous videos, and that's a fair question to ask. The answer is sort of. I did scale the face and the main body section off of my life-sized Jabba bust that I have, which is taken directly from the actual puppet. Uh, so yes, that part, the face, the arms, all of that should be entirely correct or, or more or less correct. If you look at shots of Jabba from Return of the Jedi, you can see that whenever he stands next to a humanoid, he's more or less the same height as they are. Here he is next to C-3PO, and of course Bib Fortuna actually has to kind of bend over to talk to him, so he's either at or below the average human height. However, it is true that Jabba's tail in Return of the Jedi was quite a bit longer than on my model here, and that's mostly my fault, I guess. I was really focused on trying to get the face to look good, and didn't think about proportions until it was kind of too late. But if you look at other movies, like Jabba's appearance in A New Hope, or in The Phantom Menace, for example, his body was much more compact in those movies. So I guess you can think of my version as being somewhere in between those two sizes. Here I am next to Jabba. I'm six foot one in my stocking feet, and of course I'm wearing a helmet here, so that gives me a little extra height, but I think uh, height-wise, it's just fine. It's just a matter of the tail being a little bit too short. Just to give you a few of his statistics, he's probably about ten and a half feet long if you include the curl in his tail. He's about five and a half feet tall. I'm not entirely sure how much he weighs, but I was given 36 kilograms of filament by Maker Geeks to work on this project, and I had about three or four of those left over at the end, but I had used several of mine at the beginning before I received any filament, so I'm guessing maybe 35 to 40 I used for this entire project. Of course, there were some failures in that, so he doesn't weigh that much, but still that gives you an idea. One of my goals from the very beginning of this project was to release the 3D model that I had commissioned and allow anyone to download it for free and print their own Jabba, whether it's life-sized or teeny tiny. I just wanted a nice detailed model of Jabba to be available to the community. And while this project is not complete, as you can probably tell, I still need to do the painting and finishing. I'm not really sure how long that's going to take, to be honest with you, and I probably need to take a little break. Anyway, so I decided to go ahead and release it right now. As of right now, the model is available on Thingiverse and Cults, and I'll be adding it to other sites in the future. I ask that you don't do that yourself, though, because I'd prefer to be the one in charge of that. If you do end up printing this, I'd love to see what you've done. You can post a make on whatever site you downloaded it on, or you can just tweet me at Mighty Jabba with a picture of what you've created. That would be really awesome. I'd like to see as many people as possible using this model. I'm not making the exact cut-up version that I used to print my life-size Jabba available because I had a number of problems with it, and I really think it's a better idea, as I mentioned, to make the shell pieces thicker and uh, maybe uh, just resize some of the sections as well. So I, I just think it would be doing you a disservice to give you those to, to start from. Uh, it's really better for you to cut it up on your own to fit your own printer and your own requirements. But I am happy to help if you have any questions about how to do that. Thanks for sticking with me on this project, and I hope maybe it's inspired you to try to print something a little bit more ambitious than what you might normally do. I mean, 3D printing being what it is, you can print just about anything at any size. So if you have a favorite character or something like that that you'd like to try printing at live size, give it a try. It might just work. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Maker Geeks for making this project possible.